Hello, my name is Dr. Andrew Garin. I'm a gastroenterology fellow and postdoctoral research fellow in the divisions of gastroenterology and Institute for Healthcare Studies at Northwestern University. The editors of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology have asked us to talk about our recent paper entitled, Many Patients Continue Using PPIs After Negative Results from Reflux Testing. For some background, many of the readers of this journal know that GERD and GERD symptoms affect up to 20% of the U.S. population, and many of these patients are referred to GI physicians. There's considerable morbidity, and the symptoms contribute substantial cost to the U.S. healthcare system, mainly in the form of acid suppressive therapy. Even with effective therapy, many of these patients, up to a quarter, may still have continued symptoms. This may be due to a number of factors, including improper dosing time, coexisting or alternative disorders, and, and adherence. Guidelines suggest that when patients do have continued symptoms after escalated therapy, they should undergo endoscopy and physiologic testing, that being Bravo pH, pH impedance, or pH catheter testing. Negative endoscopy and negative results implies then that these patients may not require acid suppression and presumably management should include at least a trial of stopping or decreasing PPI therapy. So the purpose of our study was to determine what the prevalence of continued or current PPI use was after negative results from reflex testing. Reflex testing being Bravo pH or impedance pH testing. We also wanted to determine whether there were any predictors of continued PPI use. So we conducted a cross-sectional observational study. We utilized a combination of chart review and a detailed telephone survey. The telephone survey collected data on demographics, symptom severity, including the GERD Q score, and health outcomes, including the, EQ5 for the, including the EQ5D for quality of life. And then patients were stratified by current PPI use. So our patient population consisted of a total of 90 patients. These patients were, 66 of them had had Bravo pH testing, and 24 of them had had pH impedance testing. The primary outcomes of our study were that over 40% of the patients, or 38 out of 90, reported current PPI use despite negative results from a pH study. For the entire study sample, 17 patients, or almost 19%, recalled being instructed to stop taking the, their PPI, meaning that the majority of patients were never told to attempt decreasing PPI use. Chart review data showed that only 15 patients, or like 16, about 16%, had documented instructions to stop PPI therapy. Of those patients taking a PPI, over a third of them were taking twice daily therapy or high dose therapy. Our secondary outcomes found that there was really no difference in PPI use when we stratified by diagnostic tests, demographics, or clinical characteristics. There was also no difference in outpatient visits to GI physicians or primary care physicians and use of medications for anxiety or depression. So in summary, we think that our study reveals potential opportunities for clinicians to improve counseling after patients have negative pH testing. At the very least, many of these patients probably deserve a trial of stopping their PPI. Now our study was not designed to compare diagnostic testing modalities, although we think prospective studies are needed to do this to determine how these different testing modalities can affect patient outcomes and PPI prescription patterns over time. And efforts are better needed to stratify these patients who respond poorly to PPI therapy based on their physiologic parameters and evaluate strategies to expedite diagnostic testing to improve patient outcomes. Again, on the behalf of my co-authors and the senior co-author John Pandolfino, we appreciate this opportunity to provide this video abstract for the readers of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Please feel free to contact me or Dr. Pandolfino if you have any questions about the paper. Thank you.